Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Time has come to lean back, enjoy, and celebrate after all the stimulating sessions, meetings, and discussions we have had. Our evening will begin with a two-part award ceremony. For the first part, I would like to call on Lord Kerry of Clifton and His Royal Highness Prince Turki Al Faisal, co-chairs of our C100 initiative, to present the first ever C100 award. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege tonight, together with my colleague Lord Kerry, as co-chairs of the Council of 100 Leaders, West Islamic World Dialogue of the World Economic Forum to present the first ever award given by the Council. The C100 is an initiative of the World Economic Forum that was launched here at Davos at the annual meeting in the year 2004 to promote enhanced cooperation and mutual understanding across the Western and Islamic worlds. This global community, drawn from public figures and other leaders in business, media, religion, civil society, and academia, has an unparalleled capacity to mobilize and promote practical change. It has become a vital platform for innovative thinking and over a dozen initiatives with real impact in areas ranging from youth and media to education and religious exchange. This is only the beginning, and I would like to take this opportunity to invite each of you as members of the World Economic Forum to join in support of our work. But tonight we are here to honor someone whom we believe has come to embody in a unique way, the goals of cooperation and harmony between the Islamic world and the West that we seek to promote. And that person, ladies and gentlemen, is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is a name now familiar to all of us, yet he was born with a rather different name, replete with echoes from ancient Rome, Cassius Marcellus Clay, in Louisville, Kentucky, to parents in modest circumstances. Few could have predicted his subsequent career. In junior high school, he learned boxing from a policeman at a local gym. By the time he had reached high school, he already aimed to box in the Olympics. And at the Rome Olympics in 1960, he defeated all his opponents to win the gold medal in the light heavyweight division. It was not long afterwards that the then Cassius Clay felt called to this to change his religion and to become a Muslim, taking the name by which we all know him today, Muhammad after the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Ali, after the husband of the Prophet's daughter, Fatima, and the fourth Caliph of Islam. His next famous moment came when having first been declared unfit, he was reclassified and called up to serve in the Vietnam War in 1967. But he refused, saying that his personal religious beliefs forbade him to fight in the war. 
The result was a temporary end to his boxing career with a conviction and fine, which were eventually and sensationally overturned by the Supreme Court in the United States. After that, Muhammad Ali went on to become the first boxer ever to win the title three times and, his all -time, and in his all-time professional record of 61 fights, he won no less than 56. Muhammad Ali, ladies and gentlemen, I want to join Prince Turkey in celebrating uh, this gentleman whom we honor with the first C100 uh, award. For all the fact that we first knew Muhammad Ali as someone who came to fame as an expert in the controlled use of violence and in all those colorfully named fights such as the rumble in the jungle, it's for his life since he gave up the game, the ring, and the uses made of his fame that we honor him this evening. In 1984, Muhammad was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and he's offered a very public example to us all of courage in facing and living with a progressive and incapacitating illness. Who among us was not stirred and moved at the sight of his courage as he lit the Olympic flame at the start of the 1966, 1996 Summer Games in Atlanta, Georgia. Yet there's more too, for since his final retirement from boxing, Muhammad Ali has come to be perceived as a person representing peace, goodwill, and cooperation. Here is someone born and raised in the Western world and Christian world. It was in this world that he rose to his fame and fortune, <clears throat> and at the same time, as Prince Turkey has said, became a Muslim committed to the ideals of his faith. In his person, he thus combines the world of West and Islam. It's for all of this that he received many prestigious awards and has been appointed United Nations Ambassador for Peace. And then in last November came the formal opening of the $82 million Muhammad Ali Center in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. I'm sure that all of us here will remember many of his poems um, and doggerels for which he is uh, famous. I want to read some of them uh, to you. Um, do you remember, Mohammed, when you fought Frazier? Frazier is so ugly, he should donate his face to the U.S. Bureau of Wildlife. <laughs> or, Mohammed, you said, I'm so fast that last night I turned off the light uh, switch in my hotel room and I was in bed before the room was dark. <laughs> or the way in which you went to a restaurant in those terrible days when black and white were not allowed to mingle together, and you went to a restaurant and the waitress said, we don't serve Negroes here, and quick as a flash, you replied, that's okay, I don't eat them either. <laughs> <laughs> but you said, <laughs> but you said more movingly, service is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. And of course, we well remember that you could float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Well, the sting these days. <laughs> the, sting, the sting these days is used to stimulate us with a new urgency for the task of promoting peace and cooperation while the beauty of a butterfly is an image that Muhammad Ali has now used in a wholly new way in his recent book. In 2004, Muhammad Ali published The Soul of a Butterfly, Reflections on a Life's Journey with his daughter, Hannah Yasmin Ali. And in the book, there is a poem entitled God Bless the World, and that surely sums up what the C100 is all about and the work of the World Economic Forum. And in the words of the poem, I hope that one day all, nations great and small, will be able to stand up and say, we lived in pursuit of peace for all. Please join Prince Turkey and myself in expressing your support as we present the first ever C100 award 
to Muhammad Ali, Ambassador for Peace. Thank you, Lord Carey and His Highness, for your kind presentation. And we offer a warm welcome to the Hi Your Highness Ambassador Al Faisal as the new ambassador of the United States, and we wish you a very successful tenure. Muhammad is truly gratified to be the first recipient of the C-100 Award, not really for the individual recognition it brings, but because of the meaning behind it and why all of you are here tonight. Dialogue between all peoples, especially those from the Western countries and, uh, and of the Muslim world, has always been vitally important. But now we believe this dialogue is even more vital. We are living in a time when no one can, be, can afford to be ignorant of the other places and other people. Muhammad has always sought to understand and embrace a common humanity in all of the places he has been and all of the people he has met. Being a Muslim has allowed him to adopt this worldview. To him, this is what Islam is all about. This is what it stands for. He is flattered that the World Economic Forum would recognize what he considers a fundamental part of his life as something that works toward promoting understanding across all segments of society. And even today, as Muhammad has Parkinson's disease, as you all know, even though his voice is silenced, Dialogue is not always verbal. Sometimes it's about the gesture. It's about your actions. It's even about how you do things with other people, which is what he does now. He's always set the example, and he always will. There is still much work for us to do, much work to be done. And um, the C100 Award represents the best of what the World Economic Forum seeks to accomplish as truly a global interest. We congratulate each of you on your important and innovative programs this organization has undertaken to meet some of the most challenging and economic and social issues of our time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, arts and culture play a central role in the transformation of human society. And for this reason, on the initiative of my dear friend, late Yehudi Menuhin, every year at the annual meeting, we honor exceptional artists who are deeply engaged in addressing the world's challenges in a creative way. And I would like to ask Shabana Asmi to join me here.
We are delighted to confer the Crystal Award to an artist who describes herself as a daughter, a wife, a mother, a woman, an actress, an Indian, and a Muslim, Shabana Asmi. She is an internationally acclaimed actress who is well known for her art, and she is, as she is, for her social activism. A believer that art should be an instrument for social change, Shabana Asmi is world renowned for her powerful performances of women standing up to the many forces that oppress. Her artistry has garnered her numerous international awards and five national awards for best actress, a feat unparalleled in the annals of film industry. A fierce advocate and champion for the disadvantaged and underprivileged, Shabana Asmi is an untiring crusader of human rights, especially women rights. Speaking with the courage of her convictions, she has unequivocally condemned and fought against religious fundamentalism. As a UN goodwill ambassador, she has been at the forefront in fighting just causes from helping slum dwellers to alleviating the suffering of those afflicted by, with HIV AIDS. On behalf of all of you, it gives me great pleasure to honor you with this award. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm deeply moved. I accept this honor in all humility because the list of past recipients is so awe-inspiring that it makes me even more sharply conscious of the responsibility that an honor like this brings. I believe art has the possibility to create a climate of sensitivity in which it is possible for change to occur. Art has the possibility to promote cross-cultural understanding better than any other medium, and of these, films are the most potent. The Indian film industry makes the largest number of films in the world and has been fulfilling its obligation towards this end. I am very grateful to the World Economic Forum for recognizing its contribution. Thank you very much. And I'm doubly delighted that I'm sharing this honor with Michael Douglas and Gilberto Gilles. Thank you very much. May I ask uh, Michael Douglas to join me here on the podium? It is with equal privilege that on your behalf I bestow the Crystal Award to one of the most powerful figures in Hollywood, Michael Douglas. An internationally acclaimed actor and producer, Michael Douglas has won two Oscars, six Golden Globes, four Emmys, and other high artistic distinctions. Perhaps overshadowed by his artistic fame, it is noteworthy and commendable his commitment to humanitarian, humanitarian causes. A concerned citizen who makes social causes a priority, Michael Douglas has had a long-standing commitment to this armament, including nuclear non-profileration and the stemming of small arms. He co-produced the China Syndrome with Jane Fonda a movie that profiles the hazards of nuclear power. 
He traveled to Albania, for example, in 99, where he encouraged people at the community level to voluntarily return arms in exchange for development assistance. Those are just very few examples of your not too well known humanitarian engagement, which we want to honor particularly today. So it gives me great pleasure on behalf of all you, of you to hand you over <clears throat> and to honor you with this Crystal Award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Klaus, thank you so much for your, your very kind words. Uh, they're appreciated. And you can imagine <clears throat> for me the honor of being on the same stage with this man here, the greatest. Um, I've admired Muhammad Ali for, for so, many, so many years and all the great work he does. And, as my fellow brother, as a messenger of peace the United Nations, and to be with an actress who's done 140 movies, a member of parliament, uh, a mother, and all humanitarian work. And you're gonna meet in a second one of the uh, favorite musicians I have who also manages to be a minister of culture from his country. Uh, this is a tremendous honor, not to mention the fact that my cell phone is ringing and my wife is on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, right? and uh, she's home, home with the kids. Um, you make my father proud, so thank you uh, all very much. This is my first time uh, I've been here uh, at the forum, uh, and it's been an extraordinary experience, uh, the, the mix of uh, the corporate world, uh, leaders of the world, uh, and the cultural events, and it's been a fantastic mix uh, that I've really enjoyed tremendously, so thank you for having me here. Uh, and in the spirit of the, uh, the forum, and hopefully as this year looks ahead to improve uh, the world we live in, in a creative fashion, I wish us all good luck. And on a personal note, I hope the world will be more nuclear safe by the end of this year than we are now. So thank you all for coming, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. The last Crystal Awards this year goes to a government leader and musical legend, Gilberto Gil. He is one of the most important singers, composers, instrumentalists of modern Brazilian pop music. He has an extraordinary musical career that spans nearly four decades, starting as a bossa nova musician, then composing protest songs that reflected his deep sense of political awareness and social activism that later led to his exile in London. He was one of the leaders of Tropicalia, a cultural movement that sparked a whole renovation in all aspects of artistic manifestation in Brazil, from cinema to poetry and literature. In his music, one finds a remarkable rhythmic versality and a wide variety of themes ranging from human behavior to social issues such as racial and religious discrimination. For his work, he has received numerous awards, among them Grammy Award for World Music, the Order of Cultural Merit by the Brazilian Ministry of Culture, your ministry now, and the Distinction Artist of Peace of UNESCO. In 2002, he was appointed Minister for Culture mandated to democratize culture and bring arts to people in the favelas, to landless peasants, 
and to the poor. He has been active in the fight against hunger and is a staunch promoter of the Zero Hunger Project in his home country. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that on behalf of you, we bestow the Crystal Award to Gilberto Schell. Thank you, Mr. Schwab. Uh, Professor Boaventura Santos Souza, a great um, intellectual of the Portuguese speaking world that I am also part of, says that we have to fight for equality whenever difference makes us inferior. But we have to fight for difference whenever equality makes us decharacterize it. We do so through various forms of action, being dialogue, the most efficient and harmless one. This institution, the World Economic Forum, and this award that is given to the ones committed with improving dialogue in the human society, this institution and this award are among the harmless forms of promoting understanding and cohesion in today's world. I'm grateful to find my music recognized as having somehow contributed to this process. Thank you very much. Now we have the great pleasure to enjoy the traditional Saturday evening concert under the baton of Maestro Howard Griffiths, who is also the artistic director. The concert also features Julian Achlin, violinist. Ladies and gentlemen, after having listened the last years to famous orchestras coming from many countries in the world. I'm particularly privileged to welcome tonight a famous orchestra from our host country, the Zurich Chamber Orchestra, here in the Congress Hall. They will perform first the Concerto for Violin and Orchestra, Opus 61 in D Major, by Ludwig van Beethoven, and how could it be expected otherwise in the year of Mozart? The Symphony Number no. 41 in C Major by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. My dear friends, I wish you a memorable evening. 